Hey man, this is Farhan. And today I want to talk about the thing that is killing your confidence. I know what you're thinking. You know exactly what that is. And you're probably wrong. 95% of guys who believe they know what is killing their confidence is wrong because most people don't know the science. Now, you might think that the thing that is killing your confidence is the way you look, your body. Well, it's not that. You may think it's your inher inheritance, your genetics, how you were born. Your parents don't have confidence, so you don't have confidence. It's not your genetics. Now, you might think, you know, a lot of guys are going bald. A lot of guys have some issues with their facial hair and can't grow a beard. So you're like, oh, I'm not confident because I don't have hair on my head or I can't grow a beard. No, it's not that either. Or you may think it's your friends. Or you may think it's your parents or your family. No, that's also not what's killing your confidence. Now, some people think it's social media addiction. It's, uh, you know, Facebook. Nope, it's not Facebook, it's not Instagram, and it's not YouTube. It's not social media either. Now, the reason I'm, I'm telling you what it's not is because I want to sort of get this, these questions out of the way. You're probably thinking this already. Look, it's not the television. It's not what you watch on Hollywood in the movies you see, and it's not society and culture and all that. And it's not the government. It's not your political system that you follow. And neither is it any religion. Okay? So what is the answer? Now, try to understand that I'm about to reveal the answer to you. But understand that it is not anything that you would even remotely think of. And you know what that is? You know the number one thing that's killing your confidence? Well, I'm going to reveal it in... It is your brain. That's right. This guy right here. Your brain. This structure that is inside your head right now, that is what is killing your confidence. Now look, most guys get this wrong. About 95% of men don't know this. And even smart people don't know. I did not know either. The only reason I know now that our human brain, the way our human brain is designed, the way it has evolved, or not evolved much, is the main factor behind your lack of confidence, your lack of trust in yourself, your lack of expression, the fact that you cannot be who you are to the world, all of that is because of your brain, the human brain. Now, let's unpack this together so you can really understand what's going on and the science behind it because the only reason I figured it out is because I studied the science. I also want to give you some brain hacks in this video because I feel that there's in particular one hack, which is my favorite brain hack that I have used on myself, started years ago, which helped me tremendously. It almost automatically made me confident. And it has worked on hundreds of the clients that I have coached one-on-one, -on -one, as well as in group coaching. And you know, it's literally something I charge thousands of dollars to teach people, but I'm gonna give you this for free in this video. So make sure you watch till the end uh, to get all the brain hacks. But before I give you that, let's talk a bit about the brain and sort of visualize this together so you can understand the hacks that I'm about to tell you. Now, I want you to listen very closely with what I'm about to say. You could be 
a teenager in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever your age is, your brain is millions of years old. You may be young, even if you're 70, imagine. Your brain is not 70 years old. It is millions of years old. If you look at studies that look at hand tools, for example, so they do these studies where they look at, you know, they take modern humans like you and I, they put them in a scanner, and they look for areas of the brain which activate when these humans use certain tools, you know, hand tools that our ancestors used to use. So in particular, one of our ancestors, Homo erectus, right? We're Homo sapiens. Before us were other species of Homo. Homo erectus was a species that was alive 1.8 million years ago. And what they've done is when we use these same hand tools that Homo erectus used, they find certain areas of the brain that are activated which allows us to understand that that part of the brain was being used 1.8 million years ago by the Homo erectus species. And what's interesting is that the species before that, they were using more primitive hand tools. So when we use those, you know, modern day, and, and we put them in a scanner and, and we study these in neuroscience experiments, those areas of the brain are no longer activated because those tools are older, they're more primitive. So we know for a fact that our current brain at least goes back 1.8 million years. Those areas that have developed, those more modern areas that are more cognitively rigorous and, and advanced, now, if you just look at genetic expression, just genes, they found very recently that human beings have Neanderthal genes. Neanderthals. Neanderthals are, let me show you what Neanderthals look like. Before I, before I uh, show you that, just let me mention that the paper that I just mentioned about the hand tools, that's a nature paper. Nature is the best journal you can publish in. And, I just want you to understand that every single paper that I quote or I read is very high impact, peer reviewed paper. It's not some BS paper, old paper that's in a, in a weird journal. No, these are very rigorously done, very high impact journals that I always talk about. Now, this is what a Neanderthal looks like. These Neanderthals have been extinct for 40,000 years at least. And we find genes in current humans that are Neanderthal genes. And these genes affect the illnesses that we have, our height, how tall we are, and even our immune system. So no matter how old your brain is, the genes that are expressed in your body may Go back to the Neanderthals. These are the genes that you have in you. And by the way, these studies were done in Europeans, in Caucasians, um, because that is you know, based on the geographic location of these people, that is what they studied. And that's what we found, and it's, it's profound. So I'm telling you these things because the brain, even though we live in a modern culture, modern society, it's very old. And just something very specific that I want to share is that these gene fragments from the Neanderthals have been found in 52 different types of human tissue. And they've also found that these correlate with both depression and addiction. So think about it, man. Our brain is living in a modern society full of perhaps noise and confusion and all these different concepts of you know government religion body image social media 
porn, cigarettes, alcohol, uh, toxicity from people who make fun of us, bullying, all these things that are happening. And then we go to school, we go to work, we go in the subway, we see people around. It's this modern culture which has the old brain to live with, right? We have this brain that's so old, but it has to live in this modern society. So how can it cope? And one more thing I want to say is that the urges that you have, the arousal, the temptation, you know, the fact that you're addicted to porn, a lot of guys are, maybe you're not, but you're addicted to something. Or the fact that you have these things in the environment, sugar, fatty foods, junk food, all these just perhaps harmful things in the environment. And it's very hard for you to control yourself and do the thing that is actually beneficial for you because you lose control of yourself. So I just want you to understand where we're going with this uh, and, and how important this is for you. And it's like our brain is always fighting between this urge of, of the crocodile brain, the limbic system with the emotions, the arousal, you know, where the hypothalamus is, the amygdala is, these emotional centers of the brain, these arousal centers of the brain. And that's sort of battling or trying to integrate and collaborate with the neocortex, the, the more advanced part of the brain, which is the more evolved part of the brain, especially the prefrontal cortex here in the front. So this is what your brain is going through every single day as you move around in the world. Look, man, our brains want to stay comfortable. We want to stay in our comfort zone. Okay, look at these words that I've written. Safety, comfort, belonging, fitting in. Okay? You've heard this saying that the lone wolf can go against the pack of the wolves. And then the other saying is the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. This is true for the most part, because from the way our brains have evolved, if we go against our tribe, if we go against society, then we may not survive because we have always lived in a very turbulent, a very harmful, a very uh, dangerous environment, you know, full of predators and us trying to survive with the last bit of morsel of food we can find. Now, I don't expect you to believe me here if you haven't experienced it in your own life, but I'll tell you something about my life that is very personal to me and it's quite embarrassing. So I remember, um, you know, way back in the day, I was very afraid of doing the chaotic thing, very afraid to get out of my comfort zone. You know, I would basically not talk to anyone. From childhood, I was always for, it was, it was like a forbidden thing to talk to anyone outside of my religious community, to talk to a girl, to even make eye contact with a girl. It was like, you know, keep your eyes down when you go across a woman. It was sort of against our culture, against religion. It was just kind of put into me. And the thing about my brain is that my brain always wanted to be comfortable. 
And I knew I was really book smart. I was really good at getting straight A pluses. And, you know, I was always the top kid in my school, not just my class, but my entire school. And they all, you know, everyone hated me because I always either burned the curve or, you know, got a hundred when the average was a 30. And that was really easy for me. It was safe. It was belonging. It was fitting in. I was validated by my parents, by my relatives. Now you may not be the person who's getting straight A pluses or, 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 or excels in academics, but I'm sure there's something you do to stay comfortable and stay safe in your, in that zone, that belonging fitting in zone. So I was in that zone. I couldn't talk to people. I was afraid to talk to strangers. I was literally zero confidence. Now, it's not that I didn't want to, I wanted to, like I would see a girl in high school, you know, a hot white girl right there across. I can still imagine her face right now as I, as I talk to you. And she would look behind with her long hair and smile at me. I was just so scared to do anything. I would just put my gaze down and keep studying. It got to the point where I was getting love letters from women in high school, like girls would drop these love letters in my bag. And, and one of the most embarrassing moments of my life is now that I look back, I didn't realize it at that time, but I would give the love letter to my mom. My mom would read that and then threaten me that Farhan, I will kill you if you go out with this girl, because right now you need to study hard get the best grades, focus on your studies, and I am the only girl for you. I am the only woman for you in the world. I am your girlfriend. That's what my mom would tell me. How embarrassing, right? But at that time, I wasn't embarrassed. I was happy. I was like, sure. I'm going to continue to get amazing grades and forget about this girl stuff. Even though inside of me, there was some, some, some drive, some, something that was like emerging, you know, some dark side that was calling me, but I didn't listen. Now, this exact fear, lack of confidence, zero confidence that I just expressed to you, that might not be exactly the case with you. You could be someone who is afraid to talk to your boss about a raise. You know, I've had clients that have told me that. Or you might be afraid to stand up to your parents. You might be afraid to go to the gym because you think you're going to get judged or take your shirt off in a swimming pool or at the beach because you think people are going to think you're, you're ugly or have a bad, bad body or, or whatever the case may be. There's a lot of reasons why we have low confidence. And I mean, a lot of you might have to do with your career. Like you want to start a new business. You want to become an entrepreneur. You want to travel. A lot of my clients want to do that. They're like, oh, I want to go to Ibiza to do real estate. Um, or I want to move to Peru to manage a hostel with my friend. I mean, all these things are happening. This is so real. Whatever that thing is for you. Imagine this for a second, whatever that thing in life that you cannot express yourself fully in, or you're scared to do, or you, you have some kind of fear, some kind of anxiety, you feel that you're not enough about something in your life. And it fucking, you think about it all the time, every fucking day. What is that one thing? Think about it right now. Imagine it. There are certain actions. You can make your body do something, a movement, to get rid of that fear or even have the fear and do it anyway. There's an action you can do and that ties into the hack that I told you about earlier. Now we have this saying in the Aphrodite Academy. You may not know what the Aphrodite Academy is if you don't yet you will know soon, I promise. The saying is, it's actually a way of life. It's not even a saying. You 
become the actions you take. Think about this for a second. You don't become the thoughts you think. No. Hell no. You don't become the feelings you feel. No. Far from it. You become the physical actions that you take. I want you to say this with me. This is a mantra that, that we always say in the Aphrodite Academy. And once you become a member, you'll, you'll learn about it. And if you're already a member, great. You know about it already. You become the actions you take. Say it with me. You become the actions you take. Now, during my PhD studies, I remember reading about this study, which is a biofeedback study, right? I've, I've written this biofeedback smile. I want you to do something right now. I want you to smile and close your eyes. I'll close them with you. Okay, close your eyes, smile, keep smiling. And as you smile, try to imagine a negative thought. Try to imagine something negative and smile, like feel the, the happiness, the smile. And try to imagine something negative, anything, anything. Can you? Now open your eyes. Could you? Impossible. Now, if you frowned, we don't have to do this right now. You can do this after you finish these videos. If you frown or you have an angry face and you try to imagine something negative, you can very easily. And obviously you know this because you've done it many times in your life. Very few times in our life that we smile and try to imagine something negative. There's a biofeedback mechanism. Okay. So when you, when you smile, okay, so your face has obviously face muscles and the face muscles of your, of, of the, the smiling muscles, this, these muscles that are activated right now, they are connected to a facial nerve, which goes to your brain stem and that sends feedback to your cortex and the emotional and the memory parts of your cortex are connected to each other. So when you smile, there's this biofeedback, this neurofeedback mechanism that tells your brain, oh, this guy's happy, he's smiling. But then when you try to imagine negative thought, you can't because there's a contradiction between your action and your thought. And guess what? The action wins. This is what I want to tell you. This is one of the things that I learned during my PhD studies. When someone's addicted to something, I'm sure you're addicted to something, maybe really badly addicted to something. When someone's addicted, when you're addicted, there's no lack of confidence to do that thing, right? Imagine you're addicted to porn. There's no like fear to watch a porn video. <laughs> There's no lack of confidence to watch a porn video. You fucking turn it on and watch it and you masturbate and you come. It's literally harder not to do it than to do it because you have a disease. That brain disease, which we call addiction, makes it harder for you to not do something. Let me repeat that. It is harder for you to not watch, to not gamble, to not play video games than to watch, to gamble, to play video games. Interesting, huh? Look, man, this number here, 20%, your brain is just this much in your whole body. You, know, you have your buttocks, your big legs, and your big shoulders, big fucking, your, your, your entire torso. And just this little thing right here uses 20% of your body's energy, your body's calories, your ATP. 
That's a lot. And that is why it's important for us to really focus on what is going on in your brain. So that is why your brain is fundamentally the number one factor that can either make you fully confident or zero confident in something. Look, man, research shows that we have around 50,000 thoughts per day. And 70% of those are negative. That's this sign right here, negative. Okay? 50,000 thoughts a day and 70% are negative. That's 35,000 negative thoughts per day. That tells you something. No, I mean, no wonder. No f***ing wonder. If you're going around during the day feeling down and negative and depressed and, and anxious, it's normal. Most people have that. Now, listen up closely. I'm going to reveal something big to you. That first hack I was talking about. I remember when I said that I was afraid to talk to women, afraid to talk to anyone, afraid to talk to strangers, afraid to open my mouth, afraid to express myself to the world, like badly afraid, like stomach pain, throw up afraid. I threw up many times when I first started talking to people. There was one hack that I figured out, which almost instantly made me forget about the anxiousness and fear. And it was almost like I instantly changed my brain just like that. Just boom. And of course, this was from reading a lot of neuroscience. This was after I got my PhD. Um, it was a lot of introspection, a lot of reading, a lot of experimentation, a lot of deep, 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 deep thinking. And let me tell you the hack now. So remember when I was talking about how when you're addicted to something, you have this brain disease and it's actually harder for you not to do something than to do it. So the way I hacked my brain is that I told myself and I 100% believed, 100% that I have a brain disease in which I have this uncontrollable urge to talk to everyone I see. Mwah. It was fantastic. I would go out into the street in Las Vegas. In the beginning, I was super scared and then I figured this out. And I was like, wait a minute, Farhan, you have a disease, you have a brain disorder. You have this weird syndrome that makes you just talk to everyone. You just can't help it. It's casino, the strip, the club, Walgreens, the gas station, the funeral, the wedding, it doesn't matter. You just talk to everyone. And when I was in Vegas, obviously, you know, tell you a little bit later what happened in Vegas, you know, I was working for a pickup company where we like learning how to talk to girls and stuff. And, all the instructors, the, the coaches, they were all shocked. Like, what, what happened to Farhan? How did he just like turn on this thing? And then they made me a coach after just a few months of being there because I became so good at approaching and doing the social stuff. It was unbelievable. And now I've been able to teach this to dozens of my students, my coaching clients, my group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, guys in the Aphrodite Academy. During my workshops, I talk about this. And it's such an interesting phenomenon that you need to apply to your own body, to your own brain. Because it's gonna just completely change your life. Think about it. 
If you look at brain conditioning, how the brain is programmed, how the software is there, if you can put in this little glitch, this little hack, this little, install this little thing inside, it's going to completely revolutionize your entire memory circuit, your emotional circuits, your planning circuits, just completely because now you're going to, look, the brain can be modified two ways, the, sh the very slow way or the very fast way. The very slow, which is just a normal linear way or the 10x way, the exponential way. The slow way is bottom up, right? So you do little things. You say hello to a person. You ask them for their, for their, the time, you know, what's the time right now? You ask them for directions. You slowly, slowly built up that courage to talk to people. This is just talking to people example. There's other examples too. Then you, you know, two weeks later, you maybe ask them for their phone number or you walk with them for three minutes. You, you slowly build it up. It's called the bottom up approach to brain reprogramming, brain conditioning. What I applied was a top down approach where you change something fundamentally about the brain, which trickles all the way down through action. I'm going to give you an extreme example. Don't tell my professor this that I told you because it's some secret information. So when I was a graduate student, my professor who went to Harvard for his postdoc, he told me this. He said, Farhan, so what we used to do when we trained our monkeys is we would, you know, we had to get the monkeys used to us. So every day you would go in, you give them an apple. And then the whole goal was to bring, to put a pole inside the cage, clip the monkey, take them out of the cage, put them in a chair, then bring him to the lab, get him head fixed to a chair so he couldn't move his head, and then have him fixate on a dot, and then we would give him juice as he fixated on this dot. Now, this entire process took like three months, okay? And, you know, because the first week you give him an apple, the second week you introduce the pole and he'd get all scared, the third week you clip, uh, the, the second month you kind of open the door of the cage. Then the third month you bring him out so he doesn't freak out. And every little step you give him a treat, you give him a treat, you give him a treat. This is the bottom up approach. What my boss Chris used to do at Harvard, he told me, he's like, dude, we trained that in one day. It's like, how? He's like, dude, we go in three of us with three poles. We would just, the monkey would go nuts because it's like three of us. We put the pole in, all three of us clipped him in one clip, took his ass out, and he went nuts, nuts, put his ass in the chair, unclip him, and then give him 20,000 treats. Crazy reward. And he learned in one day what us at McGill took three months to teach. That's what Chris did at Harvard. Secret between you and me. Don't tell anyone. I haven't told anyone this. I can't even can't believe I'm even sharing this with you. This video might get destroyed after you watch it. So. <laughs> um, so that's the power of action, chaos, discomfort, top-down approach, and getting rewards after. So obviously my rewards were pulling those hotties from the club or from the street and taking them home. I couldn't them because you know I had limb at the time I'll get into that soon uh, and you already know my stories so I don't have to really get into it but my god man now I can talk to anyone today I came I started at this co-working space today I just talked to everyone I know everyone's name I know the cleaning people's names I'm here in the middle of the night I'm using this conference room you know it cost hundreds of dollars but the guy said you can just use it you know, when I came to um, Toronto from Stockholm, I, I paid for economy class, just the normal plane ticket, but I got business class from the guy because I was nice to him. And, you know, I've gotten so many free things in life just by talking to people, not just, not just girls and, and hot girls with me and, and, and value and, and, and sort of uh, love and intimacy and, and, and um, kindness and, and, and friendship. 
it's not just that. It's so many perks and benefits that you just get if you're a social, cool guy. And I learned that mainly from this hack that I just taught you now. This was my secret. And now you know it. You see, this hack is so powerful that it has also worked for many of my clients, as I told you before. One client in particular, Victor. <laughs> now, Victor is an older guy. He's in his 50s, um, has a daughter. And one issue that he faced is that he was almost afraid to touch people. There was some fear that his mom had told him as a child, uh, you know, don't talk to strangers. He was, he's from uh, the Netherlands, you know, he's Dutch. And he would tell me, he's like, yeah, dude, when, you know, in my 30s and 40s, I would go to salsa classes and I would get a by by, you know, talking to a girl and touching the girl and being sensual with the girl. And I would like back away from my, my dance, my salsa dance or my bachata dance. I would back away until the boner went down. I was so embarrassed and I would feel so guilty. And so he came to me, he's like, dude, I, I'm afraid to talk to people. I'm lonely. I'm, I'm very, you know, I want to become intimate with someone. I want to get close to someone. I want to have connections, but I can't, I just can't do it. So I instilled this disease in him. I put this disease in him. I told him, listen, Victor, you have a disease of hugging people. You just, Hug everyone you see all the time. It's a disease. God gave you this disease at birth. You just now have it. So he started hugging everyone. He would hug people at dance classes. He would hug people at work. He would hug people in the street. Just Now, obviously, not everyone would hug him, but it doesn't matter because he has a disease. So he's not thinking if the hug worked or not. His disease is to hug, not to cry about if someone doesn't hug him. You know, it was very specific. And, and he's very good at following instructions, which is great for me because this worked. Because as he started hugging people, the action transformed his entire brain. And now, not only does he hug people, now you know, it's, it's, the disease thing is, is, is over because now it's just a natural part of him. So now he shakes people's hands, he kisses you know, girls on the cheek, he has a girlfriend now, his, his life is now normal. And it's funny because most of these guys who are lonely end up with a girlfriend. And it's not some just the first girl they meet. No, it's a girl that loves them for who they are because they're so expressive. It's like this inner child in them, this, this, this secret hidden thing that they bring out through the coaching that I've provided. And that's why I'm so proud of them. And look, man, this hack is super powerful. Go try it for yourself if you don't believe me and, and uh, let me know how it worked for you. Now, I told you what I struggled with. Talking to strangers, talking to girls. I crazy, spent some crazy years and a lot of learning and a lot of action to overcome it. And now I'm giving you those main hacks that I learned and, and I'll bring you more hacks soon as well, not just this one, but there's two more coming. Now, what about you? What is your one thing that you deal with every day? What is your, what is that one thing where you, that you know what, Farhan, if I could just do this one thing, life would be amazing. What is that one thing for you? Tell me, think about it right now, imagine that. Imagine if you can just do that thing with no effort. I want you to use this strategy that I just outlined, this disease strategy. Boom! Now you have the disease to do that. I just gave you the disease. I con it's contagious, you just took it from me. Go do it. So here I have written the confidence gene hack. This is essentially what I want you to embody. I want you to get this confidence gene from me, from the hacks I'm giving you, from what I'm about to introduce to you soon. I want you really to have this confidence gene, man, because once you have the confidence gene, everything in life becomes easy. Your relationships, your career, the amount of money you make, your day-to-day 
travels, your relationship with yourself, your relationship with your parents, you know, with your family, your friends, with random people, with, with, with girls that you want to sleep with, whatever you want to do with your wife, with your girlfriend, everything will change for you once you have this confidence gene that I'm going to put in you. Now, I told you about Victor. I told you about um, the hugs and how that transformed his brain. Now, let me tell you how I developed these hacks. And I'm going to give you two more hacks soon. It was through my PhD. It was through the strength and conditioning, the movement, the bioenergetics. It was a lot of mentoring from Elliot, from Elliot Hulsett at Strength Camp. If you don't know, go look up Elliot. He's one of my mentors that I work with one-on-one. -on -one. And I learned a lot from him as well. And of course, the self-experimentation. I did a lot of experiments on myself, not just nutrition and exercise, but a lot of brain hacking and to see what actually works in real life through taking action. And more recently, the 260 plus clients that I've personally coached either one-on-one -on -one or through group coaching. And these hacks are the best of the best that I have developed through these four components in my life. Now, I have two more hacks to share with you, okay? The first hack will allow the goal that you have to happen automatically. Now, try to understand what I'm trying to say here. Whatever dream or mission that you're trying to accomplish in life, whatever your vision is, this first hack will allow it to happen automatically, like on autopilot, okay? The second hack is 100% natural and scientifically proven. So is the first hack. The first hack is also scientifically proven. The second hack is very rigorously scientifically proven. So I'm going to give you that as well. And in order for you to access these two hacks, all you need to do is click the link below and I will see you on the other side. Now, before I go, I want to tell you one last thing. These hacks, these videos that I'm about to give you, if you click the button below, this will be given to you on Facebook Messenger. Keep this in mind. It'll all be through Facebook Messenger. And the clicking the button is the action that you need to do right now. Remember our mantra, you are the actions. You become the actions you take. You are your actions. So take the action of clicking the button below and getting the two hacks, because that is how with those two hacks, you can have the unshakable, unstoppable self-confidence to do whatever the hell you want in life. All right. So click the button below and I'll see you on the other side.